Good evening. This right here is the human heart. And whether you're talking about COVID or the COVID vaccines, problems with the heart are among some of the most serious effects which plague young people, especially young men. And according to a new study which just came out of Israel, well, there is a direct correlation between the rollout of the mass vaccination program in that country and an increase in the number of young people who experience heart-related emergencies. Now, let me back up for a quick moment and set the stage for you on what exactly this new study says. Among all the nations in the world, you might know that Israel was among the first to implement a nationwide vaccine mandate. And the vast majority of their people, well, they complied. Because among other reasons, they didn't really have a choice. The authorities there, they set up a vaccine passport system. And so you could not even go to the movies without showing proof that you've gotten a shot. It was, in fact, a passport system right there on your phone. Regardless, this led Israel to have one of the most vaccinated populations on the entire planet. And therefore, studying the Israeli population can give the rest of the world much insight, just because of the fact that there's so much more data to work with. And according to a new study, which was just published over in the Nature Journal, researchers found a correlation between the launch of Israel's max vaccination program and an increase in the number of emergency cardiovascular events among people under the age of 40. Now, specifically, what these researchers did was that they utilized the data from Israel's National Emergency Medical Services System over a three-year period, between the years 2019 and 2021. And these researchers, they were evaluating whether emergency EMS calls, specifically among 16 to 39-year-olds, were correlated with any potential factors, such as either COVID infection rates or COVID vaccination rates. Meaning, they were looking to see whether they could correlate the spike in certain medical conditions with these spikes in either COVID or spikes in the vaccination rate. And what they found was that there was a 25% increase in the number of EMS calls between January of 2021 to May of 2021 as compared with the years of 2019 and 2020. And just for your reference, Israel launched their mass vaccination program at the tail end of December of 2020, meaning that this 25% increase in the number of EMS calls, it began at the exact same time as the rollout of the mass vaccination program. Here's specifically what these researchers wrote on this part in their paper. Quote, the weekly emergency call counts were significantly associated with the rates of first and second vaccine doses administered to this age group, but were not with COVID-19 infection rates. Meaning that these calls to EMS from 16 to 39 year olds, they did not go up significantly during the periods of COVID infection spikes. However, the number of calls did go up right after the adoption of the mass vaccination program, after the mass vaccination program was rolled out. And to begin unpacking why, it's worth mentioning that the connection between cardiovascular problems in young men and the vaccine have already, well, long been documented. Here is, for instance, what these researchers said on this front within their paper, quote, Cardiovascular adverse outcomes such as blood clotting, acute coronary syndrome, cardiac arrest, and myocarditis have been identified as consequences of COVID-19 infection. Similarly, data from regulatory surveillance and self-reporting systems, including the Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System, otherwise known as VAERS in the United States, the Yellow Card System in the UK, and the UDRA Vigilance System in Europe, associated similar cardiovascular side effects with a number of COVID-19 vaccines currently in use. Now, just to pause here for a quick moment, it's worth mentioning that the vaccine most widely used in Israel is the Pfizer vaccine, which is of course based on the mRNA technology platform. And that'll become relevant in a moment because this study continues, quote, more recently, several studies established probable causal relationships between the mRNA vaccines with myocarditis, primarily in children, young and middle-aged adults. The study by the Ministry of Health in Israel, a country with one of the highest vaccination rates in the world, assesses the risk of myocarditis after receiving the second vaccine dose to be between 1 in 3,000 to 1 in 6,000 in men of age 16 to 24 and 1 in 120,000 in men under the age of 30. A follow-up study by the CDC based on the VAERS and VSAFE self-reporting systems further confirms these findings. Now, we have already mentioned these findings in several previous programs. However, given the topic of the study, I thought it was worth reiterating the fact that there is a already known connection between heart issues and these mRNA-based vaccines. However, there is also a known connection between heart issues and COVID-19 as well. Here's, in fact, what the study goes on to say about that. Quote, myocardial injury and myocarditis is prevalent among patients with COVID-19 infection. As COVID-19 vaccine rollouts often take place with background community COVID-19 infections, it could be challenging to identify whether increased incidence of myocarditis and related cardiovascular conditions, such as cardiac arrest and acute coronary syndrome, is driven by COVID-19 infections or induced by COVID-19 vaccines. Moreover, such increases may even be caused by other underlying causal mechanisms indirectly related to COVID-19. For example, patients delaying seeking emergency care because of fear of the pandemic and lockdowns. And so in plain English, what these researchers were 
were trying to see is whether there were more calls for heart-related issues among young people, and if so, whether that uptick can be correlated with either the rate of COVID infections or the rate of mass vaccination because both things are known to cause heart issues. After combing through three years worth of EMS data, well, they were able to find a fairly stark correlation. Here's specifically what they wrote in the conclusion of their paper. Quote, the main finding of the study concerns with increases of over 25% in both the number of cardiac arrest calls and acute coronary syndrome calls of people in the 16 to 39 year old age group during the COVID-19 vaccination rollout in Israel, which is between January and May of 2021 compared with the same period of time in prior years of 2019 and 2020, as shown in Table 1. Moreover, there is a robust and statistically significant association between the weekly cardiac arrest and acute coronary syndrome call counts and the rates of first and second vaccine doses administered to this age group. At the same time, there is no observed statistically significant association between COVID-19 infection rates and the cardiac arrest and acute coronary syndrome call counts. Meaning that these researchers found a correlation between the number of calls and the rate of vaccination, but not between the number of calls and the rate of COVID infections in general. Although it is worth mentioning that their findings don't presume causality, meaning that they say that there might still be some kind of underlying issue that we don't know about, which is causing this spike. However, the correlation that they did discover is statistically significant, meaning that what might be happening is that both COVID and the vaccine cause heart issues in a certain percentage of young people. However, generally, young people are at less risk for symptomatic COVID. However, if you implement a vast vaccination program that could potentially protect young people from COVID, but at the same time, that same vaccination program could cause some of those young people to develop heart issues when they might otherwise not have. Regardless, though, it's worth reiterating that the researchers in the study, they did not establish a causal relationship between the uptick in calls and the vast vaccination campaign. However, they did write this in their conclusion, quote, while not establishing causal relationships, the findings raise concerns regarding vaccine-induced undetected severe cardiovascular side effects and underscore the already established causal relationship between vaccines and myocarditis, a frequent cause of unexpected cardiac arrest in young individuals. Officials should incorporate EMS data and relevant data to identify potential new health trends, such as an increase in EMS calls, and promptly investigate potential underlying causes. If you'd like to read their findings in full for yourself, I'll throw a link to them. They'll be down in the description box below. And all that's going to return is that you take a super quick moment to smash, smash, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And also smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. That way you can get this type of honest news content delivered directly into your YouTube feed while YouTube still allows it. However, while we're on the topic of vaccinating children, there is something else worth noting, which is that over in the state of Rhode Island, a Democrat senator has just introduced a new bill which says that the residents there of that state who refuse to get vaccinated and who refuse the booster shot, well, they will be subject to fines as well as an increase in the amount of income tax that they will be forced to pay. Now, the state senator is Samuel Bell. He is the one behind this new proposed bill, which for your reference is officially called Rhode Island Senate Bill S-2552. And as you can see there right at the top, besides Senator Bell, this bill already has three other sponsoring senators as well. And according to the text of this proposed piece of legislation, well, any residents of Rhode Island who are eligible to receive the vaccine must receive the vaccine. And if they refuse, they will face a $50 monthly fine and they can be forced to pay double the state income tax. And for your reference, Rhode Island's state income tax sits at about 4% right now, meaning that these unvaccinated individuals will be paying closer to 8%. Furthermore, the bill also has provisions against parents of unvaccinated children. Here's specifically what the relevant parts of this bill say, quote, This act would mandate all residents 16 years of or older to be vaccinated against COVID-19. If a resident is under 16 years of age, the resident would be required to be immunized against COVID-19 with the responsibility for ensuring compliance falling on all parents or guardians with medical consent powers. Additionally, any person who violates this chapter should be required to pay a monthly civil, civil penalty of $50 and would owe twice the amount of personal income taxes. Now, in terms of why Senator Bell decided to introduce this piece of legislation, well, during an interview with the Boston Globe, here's how he himself explained his decision. Quote, the reason I introduced the bill is we have a crisis with the pandemic. Thousands of Rhode Islanders have died. I've had really painful calls from constituents who can't go to the store because they're immunocompromised, who have lost loved ones to this pandemic, who are really ill and not fully recovered, suffering long-term effects. Now, as of this moment, the bill has not passed into law and is currently in review by the Senate Health and Human Services Committee over in the state of Rhode Island. And if there are going to be any developments in regards to this piece of legislation, I will let you know right away. However, if you, until then, if you'd like to actually read it point by point for yourself, I'll throw a link to it. It'll be down there in the description box below. And now,
What's this? It's me. Of course it's secure because we use the Secure app, which is the sponsor of today's episode, as well as an awesome email and message service provider that actually cares about your privacy. Now listen, it's no big secret that our data is being mined and remined all the time. In fact, there was a recent study that was published in the year 2020, which found that 155 million Americans, likely including you and me, have suffered some form of data breach. And frankly, that's only what's publicly known. However, all those past problems with privacy issues and data mining, well, that can be an issue of the past because moving forward, you can use the Secure app, which both your messages, your emails, and your phone calls can remain private. That's because they have their servers and their data centers located in Switzerland instead of in the US or China or Russia. And why does that matter? Because Switzerland has the strictest data privacy laws in the entire world and they are not subject to the intrusive cloud app. Now, what I love the most about the Secure app is that they don't collect my data, they don't mine my data, they don't mine the data and phone numbers of my friends and family. Everything is private. And best of all, at least in my opinion, this does not work with your big tech email provider just because it is not secure. And so, and so check it out. You can head on over to secure.com and if you use promo code Roman, you can get 25% off. And frankly, their rates are not even that expensive. It only starts with $5 for the messenger and $10 for the email and messenger combo. And best of all, they offer a seven day free trial. And now lastly, I'd like to mention that later today, I am flying down to Florida in order to attend the world premiere of 2000 Mules, which is the new film by Dinesh D'Souza which exposes the illegal ballot harvesting that took place in the year 2020. The global premiere will be at Mar-a-Lago. It'll be a red carpet event, and I will be there on site interviewing all the guests. Perhaps I'll even get a chance to interview President Trump himself. And if you have any questions that you want me to ask any of the guests, including President Trump, please leave them in the comments section below. I'd really love to hear from you because, well, I'd love uh, to ask really pertinent questions that are really penetrating of people. I, I don't want to ask just random red carpet events such as, you know, where's your suit from? What are you wearing? I want to ask penetrating questions about the illegal ballot harvesting that apparently took place because that movie really exposes exactly what True the Vote found, which is that according to the cell phone ping data, trillions of, trillions of different data points that they looked at and the surveillance footage of the ballot boxes, it's, uh, it's pretty uncanny. What, what happened is it looks like maybe upwards of 5 million votes were trafficked in the year 2020 and perhaps even swung the election results. Although I don't make any such claims, that will be up to the individual states to make that determination. But at least that's what the research shows. And so if you have any questions that you want me to ask the people at the red carpet event, please leave them in the description box below. And also I should tell you that I believe on Wednesday or Thursday, we will be posting the red carpet event all in its entirety on Epic TV because frankly it goes without saying that Content like that would not be welcome here on YouTube. So if you want to check out Epic TV ahead of time, I'll throw the link. It'll be down there at the very top of the description box. That's where we post episodes of our program that, frankly, we can't post on YouTube. And also there's a ton of other great shows and uh, documentaries and movies on there that, again, because of the censorship not only on YouTube but the other platforms, you cannot find anywhere else. So check it out. The link to Epic TV will be right there at the very top of the description box. And then until next time, I'm your host, Roman from the Epic Times. Stay informed and stay free.